it's so useful. It's really, really so useful because you can... Hi everyone and welcome to ArcVis. After creating our space program with the help of ChatGPT, it struck me how useful AI can be in generation of our initial and basic understanding of the task at hand. So much so that I thought it would be worth diving into a little more thoroughly. And it's not just the space program that ChatGPT can assist us with. It's basically all the questions we might have before starting any project. AI can broaden our knowledge foundation and enhance any project, making it better, safer, more durable and so forth. One of the hottest topics these days is of course our climate on Earth. One starts to wonder whether AI can help us save the planet, come up with solution and advice. I know it's a huge discussion where AI bias, politics and so on plays a role. But for now, let's jump into ChatGPT and start asking it challenging questions to broaden our knowledge foundation before we begin designing our university campus. So all us architects can fulfill our role in making a positive contribution to the climate. Yeah, so hello again, welcome to ChatGPT. I'll start by discussing what we can use ChatGPT for as architect more thoroughly, but we will start with just picking up our assignment again, small university campus in Copenhagen. One of the questions I was really not very sure about was point number nine, the sustainability. So I just prompted the ChatGPT with it. I'm an architect, I build a university, how can I integrate? And then I just paste it and ChatGPT answers, integrating sustainable design features, energy efficient system, environmental conscious material into the construction of a university campus is a commendable initiative to reduce the carbon footprint. Here are some key strategies for considering the goal. The site selection and planning, choose your site with minimal ecological impact avoiding areas with high biodiversity and sensitive ecosystems. So that's very easy. We have a urban context, so that's not a problem. Optimize the campus layout to reduce the need for extensive infrastructure to minimize energy consumption. Passive design here, maximize natural daylighting, incorporate large windows and skylights, reducing the need for artificial light during the day. Design the building with proper orientation to harness natural ventilation and minimize the need for mechanical cooling. That's a non-problem in Denmark, but use shading elements like awnings, overhangs and lures to reduce solar heat gain in the building. Install obviously a heating, ventilation, air conditioning system. Utilize energy management system. Implement energy efficient lighting systems. Renewable energy integration. Install solar panels. Water management. Harvest rainwater, for example. Treat and reuse wastewater. Green roof and landscaping incorporate green roof to reduce the heat island effect. So the heat island effect basically forms as a result of several factors. Reduced natural landscape in urban areas, trees, vegetation and water biomass tend to cool the air by providing shade, transpiring water from the plant leaves and evaporating surface water respectively. So it's an urban problem. By incorporating a green roof, we reduce the heat island effect and it also provides an additional insulation for the building. So use recycled and sustainable materials. So that's locally sourced materials up for materials with high recycled content like recycled steel or reclaimed wood or recycled concrete. Consider materials with low embodied carbon such as bamboo, straw or rammed earth. So obviously waste reduction and recycling, certification and monitoring. So yeah. And then I wrote to ChatGPT, expand and concretize number seven, this recycled and sustainable materials. That's a big point, I think. Using recycled and sustained materials is an essential aspect of reducing the carbon footprint of a university campus. Here are some specific examples and strategies. Recycled steel and concrete, reclaimed wood, bamboo, and sustainable timber, recycled glass and plastic, low carbon concrete alternatives, eco-friendly insulations. There are some examples of that. Pervious pavers to rain, rainwater from the urban spaces and sustainable roofing materials. So I asked the ChatGPT if I have to use some sort of metal as a facade element, what is the best alternatives? If you need to incorporate metal as a facade element in your university building while maintaining a sustainable approach, there are several eco-friendly alternatives to consider. Here are some of the best options. Recycled aluminium, that could be quite useful for our campus. Remember this reference here, that looks more or less like something like that. We also saw this building up here, which was very interesting, I think. That's also a um, metal material, for example, the aluminium material we just spoke about. 
So copper and copper alloys, that's very interesting, I think, especially because we in Copenhagen use so much copper. For example, here, this is copper roofs in Copenhagen. You can see it patinates towards this green color here, but it actually starts quite brown. Like for example, this, this color up here, and then ends like a more green material, just like that. So that's very interesting. So weathered steel or quartz steel, which is basically just a corroded form for steel. It's very aesthetic. It's almost reddish rust material and zinc, stainless steel, perforated metal panels. That's a good idea. Also, these panels can improve energy efficiency, allowing for natural ventilation and daylighting while providing a distinctive architectural aesthetics. And I would very much agree on that. Anodized aluminum. I found a sample up here. You can get those in various colors. So we could use that in combination with a copper. Uh, so that's also an opportunity. Yeah, and then metal composite materials. So I asked ChatGPT, I'm building in Copenhagen where there's a lot of copper roof. Can you tell me what you know about copper as a building material in 10 to 14 lines? Copper is a popular building material with a long history of use, particularly in roofing application. In Copenhagen where copper roofs are prevalent, the material offers several advantages so it's very durable, it's aesthetic, it's sustainable, it's very weather resistant, it's recyclable, lightweight, it has thermal properties, low maintenance, adaptability, so it's easy to form if we have a complicated form language for our university campus, which is likely, and it's fire resistant. So there are many benefits for copper. So I just wrote expander number two, how long before I see the color change? Certainly copper undergoes natural process called patination. The color change happens after around typically 10 to 20 years in a coastal city like Copenhagen with moderate humidity. So this concluded this. I was very happy with the initial question I had to ChatGPT regarding sustainability and materials and have a very clear idea about what I want now. My question here is what are the 10 most respected universities in the world by architects? Some of those universities are quite, I wouldn't say ancient, but old. I asked ChatGPT for modern university, newly built, let's say not older than 1950s. So I got some new ones here. And again, I wanted some more modern universities here. So I asked it for after the year 1990. Certainly here are 10 modern universities. So I searched for them in Google and studied them. But again, it wasn't what I expected and I wouldn't say it was uh, very useful for our context and the ideas that I have. So I went on. I asked ChatGPT, have Daniel Liebeskind made any universities? And the answer was no, but ChatGPT comes up with four prominent projects by Daniel Liebeskind. I asked by Jean Nouvel, and again, it comes up with five of his most respected projects that you could study. I asked it with Bjarke Ingels, and again, he has not built any universities, but he has built some of those houses there. What well-known architects have built modern universities, and there was uh, quite some good uh, hits here. For example, this Rem Kohlhaas, Office of Metropolitan Architecture, the Seattle Central Library, which is this one, which is a very nice reference, I think, with all kinds of possibilities on exactly the context we had. So I studied this project a little. Renzo Piano, Sarah Hadid, which made this here, which is a very organic thing. Uh, so I don't think we can use it for anything, but it's a very nice house. Norman Foster, Herzog de Moron, Frank Gehry, Stephen Hall, uh, the Simmons Hall at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology is a very nice reference also. It's like this. Yeah, a very, very cool building. And then you could see I've stopped and start to asking about our room programming here. But after that, I asked ChatGPT what the difference between a faculty and administrative office was. And it started a very broad discussions about all the facilities we have in our room program, as we already discussed in the last video. It was a very interesting discussion. What's a seminar room and so forth, where you can really go into the size, the furniture, the audio visual equipment, how it's best for learning in these rooms and so forth. So you can really fill up your knowledge about every function and every room in your assignment here. Yeah, so here I asked ChatGPT, okay, so can I merge classrooms and seminar rooms? And let's say to be approximately 60 square meters of flexible rooms. And yes, you can definitely merge class and seminar rooms and so forth. So you can have this discussions also here. It's what is lecture halls and it's a discussion about what do we have to make in these lecture halls is basically a low key 
auditorium for example here okay but the program include a versatile auditorium of 2000 square meters maybe it's a good idea to come up with a couple of larger lecture halls as well for example 500 square meters or so and the chat dbt just wrote indeed it's good to have these flexible capabilities in a university so that's also a thing that we incorporated into our space programming here i started a discussion about the student lounges and the recreational spaces and here you can see so i ask okay shouldn't we then move recreational spaces to the group two academic facility and the ChatGPT think it's a good suggestion and then we merge the student lausens to be close to cafeteria and again ChatGPT think it's a very good idea here's a discussion about individual study areas and how could we design the perfect individual study areas here's about the lecture halls yeah and discussions about what's different between a lecture hall and a small auditorium there is not much of a difference so here for example i started to prompt it a little bit differently i asked it the three most important architectural points in a dedicated library space because it was a little bit fluffy the discussion so i wanted to make it more concise for uh, what we needed to do with it in the room program so for example here natural lights and views flexible and functional layout acoustic design so it's trying to ask the precise question to ChatGPT that answer your specific point about architecture in our case here again the five most important architectural points in a dedicated library space very short again natural lights functional layout acoustic design adequate shelving and storage technology integration for accessibility again here the five most important architectural point in a group study area yeah and so forth here I start to make a discussion about the architectural space program, dedicated technical installations. Yeah, we talked a little about heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems. We talked about space for toilets, elevators and stairs and so forth. So as you can see, we can just go on and on and ask ChatGPT about more or less anything to get a broader understanding of the assignment you're into or materials or references or what have other architects done so far and what's the general rule of thumbs for toilets and elevators and ventilation and technical installations and what's the five most important architectural points about this and that it's so useful it's really really so useful because you can obviously research this through a google search or through speaking to um, proficient people about these subjects and you can talk to your client about them and you can study them on your education but this is a very very fast way to get important architectural points on specifically what you want to know so i would say chat dbt is really an important new cornerstone for our sector as well as more or less any other sector no matter what you work with so yeah i think i'll wrap it up here as you can see, ChatGPT can really be a valuable tool in various aspects of the architectural workflow. However, it's essential to note that not everything ChatGPT generates is an absolute truth. We must always consider the potential for bias as ChatGPT is programmed by humans and rely on a underlying database for its training. Therefore, it's crucial to verify its answers it provides, especially when they are foundational or critical to our tasks. I think we're ready now to begin developing the most suitable design for our university campus. We have a clear understanding of our assignment, how to address it, a precise room program with important notes on functions and requirements, as well as a broad comprehension of our task through references, sketch renders and material tests. In the next video, we'll jump back into 3D Studio Max and start putting it all together. As always, if you have anything to add, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Remember to like this video and hit the subscribe button if you like the content. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.